Thanks for the support as a channel member, Shadowhawk19. Oh, boys and girls, we are going places in the football club. Europa League in the bag. Champions League qualified for. Now we just need to put together a squad that can uh, win the Premier League. We also might have stadium news. And you never know, this might actually be the summer that I finally leave Burton. Who knows? Hello and welcome to Club 2, part 43 of Non-League to Legend. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode is our season review and transfer special at the end of another trophy winning season. Only the second one in the history of this football club. We obviously won the Carabao Cup last year and this year we have delivered the Europa League. What a beautiful trophy it is too. So kicking things off with our season review and our signing of the season has gone to Kyle Rutter. Lots of you are probably complaining that he was no Miles Leeburn replacement. But 31 goal contributions from 38 appearances. He's got nearly as many assists as he has goals. He might not be the 30 goal a season striker that we wanted. But the fact that he can do that as well is what's made everybody else around him that much better. And to be fair, we've had the same out Saturday, Sunday, who's got seven goals, 12 assists. We've brought in strikers who play much better for the team rather than just being out there to grab the goals for themselves. And that's why we've seen so many goals this year from the likes of Stanis, um, Amo, Amayor, um, even O'Donoghue started scoring a few goals towards the end of the season. So our attack as a whole has improved. And I think Rutter is the personification of that. So congratulations to him winning signing of the season. The board expected us to finish mid table and we ended up nicking second place on the last day. I think the last day of the season was the only time all season we were ever as high as second in the league. Uh, we were never realistically in a title race. We'd like to be next year, but in order to be there consistently, obviously we need to fix this average home attendance, 9,657, 100% sold out we need that new ground the the board are looking at it hopefully this summer we get a little bit more news on when it might be happening because we need it if we could maybe move to pride park in the meantime that would be good but uh we shall see i guess biggest win in possibly the biggest win of my football manager career in competitive games there apart from like the club world cup but i did say competitive games and then money wise sponsorship income is up again it's almost doubled in fact that's a massive increase in sponsorship income broadcast revenue down ever so slightly which i'm a little bit confused about because we obviously went all the way to the final of the europa league and finished second in the premier league but I guess that's because we didn't have such deep runs in the domestic cups, maybe. I don't really know why that's gone down, but corporate and hospitality is up. Competition prize money is massively up because of winning um, the Europa League and, of course, the higher Premier League finish and match day revenue is up a little bit as well. We now sell 14,000 shirts, still selling more shirts than we have seats in the stadium, which, again, is a situation that feels like it needs fixing. O'Donoghue sells more shirts than anybody else. Can't believe Saturday, Sunday didn't sell all the shirts if if posh the team i support in real life the mighty peterborough united if we had a player called saturday sunday you could be very very sure i would have a shirt with his name on and probably underpants with his name on because it's the best name in the history of the world this is our team of the year so hansen in goal back four of daniels kabazi suarez and dubai really highlighting the lack of left back we had um for a lot of the season that's probably an area we still need to fix this summer homo and oscar in midfield and of course we already have a new boy coming in to compete with them and then the excellent front for Amo Amior, Stanis, O'Donoghue and Rutter and uh, we already have a new boy coming in to compete with them as well. Uh, player of the year went to Stanis, young player of the year to Joshua Daniels considering he never had a set position in the team and it's a very young team that's pretty impressive from Joshua Daniels. Signing of the season was Rutter as we saw before Top scorer, Stannis, with 22 goals. This is what I'm talking about. Rutter creating so much space for Stannis to go and score 22 goals from attacking midfield. Rutter, most assists with 15. Stannis, most man of the matches and highest average rating. Uh, competition awards, we didn't break any this year, but we did break some club records. Rutter's 15 assists is a club record. Stannis' 10 man of the matches is a club record. Nikolai Suarez is the naughtiest boy in the history of naughty boys. And we broke both transfer fee records. Um, 
we probably won't break them again this summer, um, but we spent 57 million on Suarez and got 34 million for Rodrigo Alonso, which, looking back on it now, was an incredible piece of business. I don't expect to sell anybody for that kind of money this summer. Um, this is our all-time best 11, which inexplicably still has some players from before my time. Um, I don't even understand how that's a thing there's I mean the back four definitely needs an update there's a lot of players in here who we must have got better versions of by now if you're wondering how Lee Burns getting on by the way um he's still scoring goals in Saudi Arabia that's what he does he scores goals but like we were saying before doesn't really get the assists 32 goal contributions in the league from Lee Burn last year compared to 31 from Rutter this year and then if you look at Stannis season on season I mean, there's an obvious difference Rutter has made to Stannis. Still four assists both years, but this year his four goals has gone up to 12 goals. I imagine Amo Amayor's goal return has increased as well. Yeah, he's gone from eight to 11. His assists are actually down. Um, but Rutter has made everyone else around him play that little bit better. So I, I think I'm justified in my decision. We won a trophy. We almost won the league. We continued to get better even after losing. The best striker in Europe. I, all that being said, I'd still take a uh, Premier League quality Lee Byrne clone because I still can't get away from the fact that Lee Byrne is a championship player and did that in the Premier League. If we had someone with his physical attributes, but with uh, Premier League technicals, we'd have a 50 goal a season striker. It would be a wonderful, wonderful thing. Um, if we have a flick through the rest of these bits and bobs, our social media followers are up again. That's all we really care about. The board are looking for us to keep doing what we're doing. Build a new stadium is now on as an informational objective. Hopefully there's more information coming soon. I can't see any on there at the moment. They want us to be competitive in the Champions League, finish top half in the Premier League. And in fact, they're just happy for us to keep finishing top half in the Premier League for the next five years. I would not be happy with that, obviously. If we got a year or two into that and it became clear we were just a top-half Premier League team, I would definitely be looking to move on at that point. As soon as we hit the ceiling with Burton, we move. We haven't hit the ceiling yet, which is why I've not been looking for jobs. Um, our team leaders, O'Donoghue, Dubai and Suarez, are both... Sorry, all three of them I would expect to be here for 10 years to come, so we don't need to worry about the team leader situation at all. Let's tell the boys that we want to finish in the top half. Um, where is top half on there? There you go, top half. Yeah, oh, I, didn't, I don't know what I've clicked there. What have I clicked there? Let's just get off of the meeting. The meeting worked. I don't know why I clicked on the second half of it. And our training camp destination, we're going to the United States of America. Are we going to get any stadium news in our next inbox batch of information? Or are they just going to keep me waiting? Here is the stadium news I was expecting. Lovely, lovely, lovely. So the Burton board have today announced the club have been granted planning permission to build a new stadium. Construction of the disappointingly named Burton Stadium. I'm literally a club legend. I'm right here, guys. Call it the Kevin Chapman Stadium. The construction of the Kevin Chapman Stadium. We'll rename it will cost around 42 million um, offset by 700k received by selling the Pirelli. I've been to the Pirelli. You're getting more than 700 grand for selling the Pirelli, I'm sure, especially the amount of land that it's on. The board will secure a loan of 41 million to finance it and additional funding has been secured with a stadium sponsorship worth 21 million. Why do we need to borrow 41 million? When we've made 700k there, it costs 42 and we're getting 21 sponsorship. I feel like we could have only borrowed 20. I'm not going to argue. The board obviously know what they're doing. But most importantly, the new stadium has a 27,000 capacity. It has the undersoil heating and it's going to be, going to be completed in just two years. Now, that does, that does tempt me to just commit to Burton as a forever club. I think... I think we could win it all at the Kevin Chapman Stadium and do our first ever two-club non-league to legend. One county. We've never left Staffordshire yet. This is the weirdest non-league to legend I've ever done, but it is. it would take a lot to drag me away from this project and not be a part of that stadium when it comes. It really would. Um, <laughs> St. George's Park has been downgraded. We'll ask for them to improve St. George's Park. I don't know why we're paying for that. Uh, wages to turnover ratio. Um, 
I don't know if it's good or bad for us to be at the bottom of that. I think it's good. So, yeah, 29% wages to turnover. That's good. That means we're actually incredibly sustainable. For a team that's finished second in the league, only 29% of our turnover goes towards wages compared to Newcastle, who have 86%. And similarly, small grounded clubs are usually right at the top there. That suggests we've got a tiny wage bill compared to the rest of the Premier League. I'm just going to check. I might be giving myself an extra pat on the back here. Um, we have the 16th highest wage bill in the Premier League. So we're spending £75 million a year on wages, which is equivalent to the likes of Sunderland and Fulham. Manchester City spend £325 million a year on wages. Oh, I'm good at this. I'm good at this, and I? I know some of you love it when I say that. Um, so... That means we are going to be at the Pirelli for the next couple of years. Presumably, we'll play Champions League games at Derby. Can you take a 10,000-seater stadium into the Champions League? Is that big enough for the Champions League? Because towards the end of last season, our Europa League games were back at the Pirelli. We only played the first few group games at Pride Park. Yeah, minimum stadium capacity is 8,000. So we'll be playing in the Champions League at the Pirelli. That's bonkers. Absolutely bonkers. Um, but money-wise, things are looking good. Um, financial projections looking reasonably positive. Um, we've started to accumulate a little bit of transfer debt, but not an un unmanageable amount. Obviously, we've got the new stadium loan in, uh, in on there as well. But if we can establish ourselves as a regular Champions League team, I don't think we need to worry too much about a relatively small amount of debt, which should be cleared with a few Champions League runs, the odd player sale, and of course being able to sell out a much bigger stadium. We don't have a huge amount of money to spend this summer. The board certainly seem to be doing that thing that clubs tend to do where they're building a new stadium, where we've, we are cutting back a little bit. Although, to be fair, we've already got two expensive players coming in, a new midfielder and a new utility attacker that's all we have now utility attackers so if we have a look at how that fits into the squad I mean the squad planner is screaming at me to go out and buy a proper Premier League centre forward if I could I would they just don't exist in our price range so we're going to make do with what we've got for now uh, left back wise Van Veen I think probably is good enough although I do keep looking at was his name Gray Colin Gray at Real Madrid I would really like to sign this guy. I just don't think we can afford him. I don't think we can bring in a third 40 or 50 million pound player who's not a proper striker. Um, when it comes to looking at who could be a potential proper striker to come in, I mean, it's very clear that there's a certain type of striker that does well in the Premier League. Obviously, Lee Byrne at six foot five did well last year. Erling Haaland is six foot five. Sesco is six foot four. I don't know who this guy is, but he's a he's a big, strong, physical boy as well. That's the profile of striker that we need. There just isn't one. I don't know if it's just that we can't find them. Um, I mean, I don't really want anyone old. Let's say we go to 25 and have a look at who the best potential options are. I mean, there's no one who's screams about being ready. I mean, he's five foot ten. He's a five foot ten false nine deep line forward. It's not the guy we want. This guy is at Leicester. He's six foot two. I mean, to be fair, six foot two looks re let's re-scout him. Although, I mean, price range wise, we're I guess we're not going to be able to get him because he's so expensive. He only got eight goals for Leicester last year as well, so still pretty raw. And we just go down the list and it's like, yeah, he's another five foot ten. And we've got we've got dozens of him. We need the big, strong boy, but with better technicals than what we got out of Lieburn. Let's have a look to see what my director of football can offer me. Um, so this guy, five foot ten, he's the one we just looked at, isn't he? Rivier Branthwaite, got Brathwaite, is six foot one, but he's another one, he's a winger. He's not, he's not Erling Haaland, is he? And he's a hundred million pound plus. And then you've got this guy who is 26. So we probably don't want a 26 year old anyway. Strikers are hard to come by. I'm going to spend the whole summer trying to find one. Well, our two new boys are in. Vasilis Artimatis is an English central uh, central midfielder, defensive midfielder. Both of these players we've been chasing for ages. We actually had a deal with Artimatis arranged for him to join... I think last summer, but we couldn't get the money in place. It was whenever Amo Amayor was leaving. Was that last summer or the summer before? 
Either way, this guy was coming in and the deal fell through because we didn't get the money in the end, but he is now here. And we also have Pascal Medjo to compete with Amo Amior on that left wing. Again, he was going to be the replacement for him if he left. He didn't leave, so he's now in to compete with him both out wide on the left and up front. And they've both come in for around about £40 million. Let's just give them their lovely little squad numbers and welcome them in. And then we can have another look at the squad plan. And we've already missed out on one player this summer as well. Um, Everton have signed this guy from Nottingham Forest, who we were trying to bring in. Um, £42 million release clause with Forest. Looked like he would be a forever centre-back for us, but unfortunately, he chose to go to Everton instead. Nice little indication that despite the fact we finished second in the league and we're a Champions League club now, we're still, reputation-wise, not on the level of Everton, which is a little bit upsetting. Um we do have an offer from Everton. In fact, there's a second demonstration of us not being on the same level as Everton because now we've got to persuade Dubai to stay because Everton have come in. Why? I mean, where have they got all this money from? Everton have had a tycoon takeover. Lovely. They're playing in a massive stadium with an enormous amount of money and they're now just hoovering up both players that I want and players that I already have. This was not the plan for this summer. This was not the year when we had to battle to keep hold of our players. I thought we were past all this. Um, what would it take to keep you here? If you can give me a new contract with a significant pay increase. Um, yeah, I mean, bless him. 57 grand. Yeah, all right, Joni. We can give you that, I think. Um, if that's what it takes to keep you, right, let's offer him his new contract. At 57k, maybe even less. Um, where are we? We're not going to sign strikers. Believe me, I'm trying. Goodness me. Um, you're not having a release clause. You're not having that. Um, the rest of that I can live with. And now we can reject that. Boom. That is how you uh, how you deal with players trying to take your best players, boys and girls. But what we were going to do is have a look at how our squad planner looks with the new boys in. Um, so Medjo, possibly our best striker. I mean, he's very similar. He's the same kind of player to Saturday, Sunday, to Rutter. Like I say, we've got dozens of them. Dozens of these attacking players, wingers, who can also play up front. We don't have a single out-and-out -out striker at the club. But we've got, I mean... One, two, three, I forgot about Solari, four, five, six, seven, arguably Angelo makes eight wingers who can play up front. We're certainly well stocked in these attacking positions. Um, obviously, and then we've got the new boy, Artimatis, who is more of a ball winner than a uh, than a playmaker. So he's going to be in there competing with Homo more than competing with Oscar. So he's not necessarily the midfielder we were looking for. So possibly we're still after another deep line playmaker. At left back, I, I, Van Veen is fine, but we don't really have a backup for him. Ionita hasn't really developed the way I hope, neither has Merkovic. So we might look to move a few of these guys away and try and get the fella from Real Madrid. Likewise, we don't have much of a backup to Dubai. They're all centre-backs or midfielders who can play there. We've got a lot of very good centre-backs. If anything, we're overstocked here. Um, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven centre-backs. Probably could lose one or two of them. And then I'm pretty happy with the goalkeeper situation as well. There's nothing glaringly obvious that needs fixing in the squad. But if we can move some of the fringe players on... There's the potential to go out and spend some money on the right player if we can find them. If not, we'll just keep an eye out for Wonder Kids as we head towards the uh, the end of the summer. So you can see I was looking for my big striker, put my high jumping reach on. But if we're looking at uh, players who are, I mean, that guy's wanted by Tottenham, AC Milan. We don't need another left winger, though. I mean, he's great and a pretty reasonable price. But, I mean, we just don't need him. We've got Mejo who's just coming. We've got Amo Amo, your Saturday, Sunday, Stannis, Rutter. So, I mean, all this is going to be a, an odd summer, I think. A very odd summer. Where were we? Let's just continue looking. Just continue doing some window shopping. So, this guy wanted by loads. Oh, hello. This guy's wanted by loads of clubs. He's another ball winning midfielder, though. We've just signed one. He's available for 26 million. How does he compare to Artimatis, who we've just brought in? Um, I mean, 
He's a little bit better than him, maybe. And he's cheaper. I wish I'd have known about him before. What's this guy? Another one who's wanted by lots of big clubs. Arsenal, Barcelona, among Inter, amongst the clubs in for him. Please be a six foot four striker. Please be a six foot four striker. He's not. He's another one of these. For goodness sake, we've got a dozen of them. <laughs> I'll continue looking. Well, it's now the 1st of July. We've started to uh, shift some of these players out. My, uh, my, Director of football hasn't really understood the memo about the kind of player that we're looking for. 29-year-old defender doesn't really fit the bill. We've made a move for this, this French midfielder. We don't really need him, but he is better than what we've got. Newcastle are in for him. He's probably going to go to Newcastle, but at 26 million, it just seems rude not to. So we've cut, we've got in for him, um, but we have sold a couple of players. Dylan Smith, remember him. 25 million pounds to AZ Altmar. He's there on loan last year. We bought him for 10 million from Aston Villa. He never really got in the team. We just progressed far too quickly for him. He was a good signing two years earlier, as it was. He didn't ever cut it at Villa. He was never really going to cut it with us. Now we're bigger than Villa. Um, but 25 million for him is a nice little uh, bunch of money to come in. Likewise, Darko Merkovic, who we brought in last summer for four million pounds, never really got the chance to impress. And he's 22. He's probably never going to be good enough. Sell him on for a profit. That's part of the reason we bring in these uh, low cost players. I think they're the only two that have left for now. Vasquez has gone out on loan for the season. Um, he's gone to Stoke. For a uh, for a season long loan, which I think would do him good if he comes back having scored twenty goals. Maybe he's the striker answer. Even though I know just as well as you all do, he's just another one of these wingers who can play up front that we've got a gazillion of. So he goes out on loan. That means we've currently got forty three million pounds in transfer budget. Although we are a little bit over our wage budget because all of the loans that we had out of the club are now back in. So we probably need to move them back up into the first team squad so that I don't forget they exist. And that leaves us with a first team squad of 30 players. Obviously, Vasquez being out is one gone, but we need to shift out five or six of these probably before we start seriously thinking about bringing people in. I'd even be, I mean, if we got a good offer for Homo, I'd be interested in letting him go because we've signed Artimatis, who's English, which helps for Europa League qualification. And we're trying to bring in this French guy. He potentially falls down the pecking order a little bit. So although he was a regular starter last year, we'd maybe consider letting him go. If we were to get a big, big offer for Amo Amayor, we'd let him go. So why are Cagliari in for several of our players? Are they another one who've had a tycoon? They are. So there's money being thrown around there. as well. so We've got a couple of tycoons lurking. Southampton are in for Kyle Rutter, which seems weird. Southampton, who I think were in the championship last year, they've not had a tycoon. But they did make a lot of money last summer, I think. In fact, they spent more than they made. But they, of course, had Connor Egan, who we wanted last year. We wouldn't be looking for a striker now if we'd have been able to get this guy. He is now well out of our price range. But, uh, yeah, there's there's no real obvious improvement to players to bring in. What is mad is how many competitions we've got to play in this year. Have you ever seen the competition page look like this? So we've got the Premier League, we've got the Champions League. We're in the UEFA Super Cup, obviously the FA Cup and the Carabao Cup as well. We're also in the Community Shield because we finished second in the Premier League. And we're playing in something called the European South American Club Challenge, which as winners of the secondary UEFA competition... I think we play against the winners of the secondary South American continental competition. But that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven competitions we're in this year. We could have a trophy filled season. I'm going to try and get some players out of the club so that I can bring some more in. We love transfers. Well, we've got busy with some business. As you can see, some players have joined the club. We have a striker. I mean, Theoretically, he's the sort of the kind of striker that I was looking for. Peter Nim, on loan from Liverpool because I wasn't brave enough to spend money on him. Um, they wanted something in the region of that. So we've got him on loan for the season with an optional future fee at 63 million. He's six foot tall, pretty decent physical. It's not, he's not good enough in the air. That's a problem. And I mean, I see it as much as you lot see it. He's a little bit lacking in the technicals as well. Um, Liverpool haven't really used him. 
We've got him on loan for the year. My squad planner suggests he's the best striker at the club at two stars of current ability. It's fine. We're not going to worry about it. In more positive news, we did get William Bessie, the uh, the central mid the central midfielder that we were looking at, the twenty six million pound one. He can play in either of our defensive midfield roles, um, so he can be the competition with Oscar on that side. And then on this side, we've got Artimatis and Homo. Um, so we've got four proper solid players in there now, which means we can let Alfie Devine go. And I think he's on his way to Celtic on a season long loan that involves a future fee. So Alfie Devine probably on his way out of the club as a result of that. Colin Gray is back this time permanently. Still only 22, five caps for England. Look at his uh, look at his value. It's shot up to three stars of current ability, four and a half stars of potential. We know what we get with him. He was great in the first half of last season. Um, he can play anywhere up that left-hand side. And we've now got two proper left-backs. So we're not going to have to play Giza or Daniels out there over the course of this season. Um, in fact, Urkel Giza, we've had a massive offer from Everton for a £48.5 million offer for him. So... For a player that only started eight games last year, most of them out of position, he's probably going to be on his way out of the club and Daniels will stay as the only remaining utility defender that we've got. Um, we do have a proper right-back uh, competition player as well. Dudu is a 21-year-old Brazilian under-23 international, natural, complete right-back. Similar profile to Gray on the other side in that he can play anywhere up this right-hand side. Really, we're signing a lot of wingers who can theoretically play in defence, which is exactly what I want from a fullback two and a half stars of current ability four and a half stars of potential he joins from flamengo for 13 million pounds and then we've signed a center back giuseppe antonucci um is an italian international he's got one cap for italy 23 years old he's on loan from inter until the end of the season again with an optional future fee um we've brought him in on loan because we ran out of money to be able to buy him but if urkel geezer's leaving he just gives us a, a fifth center back if you count daniels as one of the uh, as one of the five and daniels like I say is my utility man to fund this you already knew about smith and Merkovic leaving um adala has moved on as well he's gone to olympiakos for 12 million pounds so we've made a profit on him over the course of the year that he's been here ionita has gone out on loan again this time to samson spore um i suspect he's not going to make it uh diego solari um wasn't the solution to the striker problem he was out on loan at benfica last season ended up playing in their b team briefly but we've sold him to saudi arabia 10 million pounds to Al Etifak. Um, so it's a transfer profit on him as well. Sean Potter has gone to Burnley, 1.6 million. Again, someone we've made a profit on. We're all about making these little profits. This is how we stay sustainable with the tiny capacity that we've got. Paul Pajoy, remember when I was super excited about him? It never really worked out. He'd been here three years in the end. Um, we've sold him on for five and a half million. Again, a transfer profit on him. And then lastly, Samuel Nebombe, who who joined us last summer for £16.5 million, pounds, has gone to Wolves on loan to the season with an optional future fee at £18.5 million. Pounds. So if they cash that fee in, we make a profit on him. If not, we try and sell him again next summer. Um, we're also in the process, like I say, of letting Giza leave and also Alfie Devine going on loan to Celtic. And we're trying to bring this guy in, but we can't afford to bring him in yet. But Christoph Roth, who is just a, he's a wonder kid attacking midfielder. Um, but if we do manage to get the money for Giza, we can then potentially look at maybe strengthening an attacking midfield or up front. I mean, it's where we're continuing to look. If we could find an Erling Haaland who can also play a bit like Kevin De Bruyne, like 20 million, I don't think I'm asking a lot. Um, right, we are now playing in the Euro Sam Club Challenge. I'm not going to show you this. I'm probably not going to show you any of these three stupid competitions in videos, um, but I'll play that off camera now, let you know how we get on and then carry on doing transfers. So a little bit of good news, bad news. We're about to have our first trophy lift of the season. One of seven, very comfortable win. We made 12 substitutions in that game. So uh, I don't think I've ever made 12 substitutions in a match before, but the reason we had to make 12, oh, the aliens are here. They love a trophy lift. Uh, Peter Nim, the, the striker we got on loan from Liverpool, injured after three minutes. So Saturday, Sunday came on for him and was then substituted towards the end so the young winger Teixeira could have a little bit of a run out. But we are about to see what the damage is to Nim. Um, I do hope we've not broken him 
Uh, we never really got to see him actually do anything. Where's my mouse pointer? Why can't I see the mouse pointer anywhere? There it is. So we can uh, give everybody a nice little pat on the head for a job well done wherever that match was played. I don't even know where that was played. That was played at... Uh, in Sevilla. There you go. Nice little game of football in Sevilla. And let's see what the damage to Nim is. Three to six weeks, twisted ankle. Not ideal, um, but Saturday, Sunday did come on and play well. But I guess that means, once again, back to the drawing board when it comes to trying to bring in a striker. Next stop on our pre-season adventure is the Community Shield. I think... I think I finally have my man. I have had to spend an absolute fortune on him. £66 million. Simon Thompson. I've been recording this video for so long trying to find a striker. I have spent more time on this transfer window than any ever before because we just really needed a striker. I think I even looked at this guy early in the summer and turned him down because he was too expensive. But £66 million from Leicester. He only got eight goals for Leicester last year, but did only start 15 games. Scored goals for fun when he was in uh, Belgium previously, but 21 years old, six foot two. Leaves a little to be desired on his jumping reach, but he's quick. He's a good finisher. He is a proper centre forward. He can also play left back, left back apparently, which is interesting. Um, but he will come straight in as our... Uh, as our top striker, I don't know what we've got to do to get that to move up above two stars, to be honest. We've got multiple players who are above two stars on that ranking. Um, but Simon Thompson is in. Um, we've also brought in Christoph Roth, who we were looking at before, who is immediately wanted for a loan. He's an 18-year-old Swiss under-21 international, was wanted by Paris Saint-Germain. Two stars of current ability, five-star potential with him as well. He comes in from Bayer Leverkusen. We've paid for those two players with those sales we were looking at before. So Erkel Gieser has gone to Everton for £48.5 million. Pounds, and Alfie Devine is on loan at Celtic until the end of the season. But there is uh, big clauses attached to that, an optional future fee at £46 million, pounds, which, fingers crossed, he goes there, tears up the Scottish Premiership, and they pay the fee. That would be lovely old stuff. We've still got a little bit of money left. I don't anticipate spending any more of it because I think that squad is probably good enough to win the league. I mean, we'll see what the game thinks. Maybe not. It's certainly as good as I think we're going to get. We're strengthening all of the key areas. We've now got a couple of proper starting options at both left back and right back with Daniels still there as a utility defender. We've got four dedicated centre backs. And again, Daniels there as an option to cover for everybody when they're needed. We've got a good goalkeeper and a good backup. We've got solid defensive midfield options. Two or three players can start on either side. Then you've got someone like Yabber, who, I mean, last time I looked, had five-star potential. His potential has taken a hammering this summer. Um, I wonder if anyone wants to buy him, because he's well down the pecking order. Yeah, we might just sell him. He did have lots of potential. It seems to have left him. So we'll move him on, try and recoup a little bit more money. But even without him, we've got a lot of strength in depth at defensive midfield. We could probably, in an ideal world, bring in another attacking midfielder. Although Medjo can play there. Sanguinetti, this is going to be the opportunity for a breakout year for him. Um, on the right-hand side, we've obviously got O'Donoghue and plenty of backups. Left-hand side, Mad Medjo or Amo Amayor and plenty of good backups. Then up front, I guess Thompson's going to be my starter, but we've got plenty of options to play up there if we end up not using him. I don't know how much football Kyle Rutter's going to get this year. If we were to get an offer for him, we'd probably accept it. But for now, we keep him around. Angelo is done and I would have sold him if it wasn't for the fact he broke his leg at the end of last season. So no one will buy him yet. But he is definitely going to be out on his way out of the club as soon as we're able to, to get him gone. Community Shield time. So Community Shield, we are on the verge of winning. If we can have a penalty save here, we win our second trophy of the season and it hasn't even started yet. Or if we score our fifth one. I think you probably know how penalty shootouts work. Um, but let's win it here, shall we? Because I would like another trophy lift. I've decided we're going to win all seven trophies because why on earth not? <laughs> that seems reasonable for Burton Albion. Right, deciding penalty then is going to be taken by... I don't even know who our fifth penalty taker is. Um, who's stepping forward? Why is nobody on the screen? Oh, there you go. It's our captain, Nikolai Suarez. What could possibly go wrong, eh? It's going to go wrong, isn't it? Because I've decided this is the one to show you. I never knew he was left-footed. 
There we have it, boys and girls. Second trophy of the season. This is a club that just over a year ago had never won a major trophy. We're now up to four. We've had to buy a trophy cabinet. And I wonder if the aliens are going to show up. They usually do during the trophy lifts. It's the only time we see them really these days. Uh, but they're, they're usually here when it ducks down to this next angle. Are they going to come again? Aliens? Are you just going to let us lift a trophy without showing up? I feel sad about it. Well, that's a little bit disappointing. Look how happy I am. So I've, I've tucked my tie into my trousers I had on the previous screen anyway. There is the trophy lift, though. Beautiful stuff. What a time to be alive. What a moment in history for Burton Albion. Victory at Wembley. Another trophy in the cabinet. And now we look ahead to the start of the new season. Tomorrow's episode, I said I wasn't going to show you any of the pre-season-y tournaments, but this one's Real Madrid who've just won the Champions League. So I think we probably will show that in tomorrow's episode. So tomorrow we'll have the first league game of the season. We'll have Real Madrid. Um, we are considered 12th favourites for the league. So we might not add too many more trophies to our collection this year, but we've got two circular ones. And you've got to love a circular, a circular trophy. For a second, I panicked and thought we were in the Champions League knockout stages. We're not. We're, it, we're just waiting for the league stage to start, aren't we? But that will be tomorrow. For today, I think we're probably done. I don't anticipate any more transfers other than uh, other than Yabba leaving. Um, but I don't think we're going to be bringing anybody else in. I'm very happy with this squad. It's just played very well against uh, against Chelsea. Yes, we'll confirm that those two stay captain and vice captain going into the new year. And we'll wrap things up there, I think. If you've enjoyed that video, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.